Welcome back to John's Films. Today's Saturday and I got a honeydew list that included blowing the backyard. Getting all the leaves out of there. Well, I thought, that's pretty sweet for a slow-mo video, let's do it! So I filmed myself with 24, 30, 60, 120, and 180 frames per second. Now why did I have to do that? If I want to slow stuff down, you change clip duration, put it at 50%, probably work right. Yeah? No, not exactly. You have to prep ahead. So let's take a look at what we can do in our timeline with footage we've shot and then compare the quality of it as we look over time or maybe we'll see what the neural engine does when it tries to slow things down. Let's jump at it. First, let's check out our timeline. This matters. It's at 24 frames per second. That means anything that I add to the timeline here is going to be conformed to 24 frames per second. So here I've got 24 frames per second footage. It expects to have 24 frames that it will play every second, and here we go. Now, when I took this 30 frames a second footage and tried to play it, its leaves are falling at the same speed, but that's because it's conformed 30 frames per second to my timeline. If I want to take advantage of the extra 6 frames per second that I, that I uh, created, I'll go in here to change clip speed, and here, magic number is 80%. 24 is 80% of 30. And now I can see I've got more frames, and those extra frames benefit me by making it fall just a little slower. Not incredibly recognizable, but can add the right touch to the right shot. Going further out, here we are in some footage that I shot at 60 frames per second. Now this just runs along 24 frames as well. Why? Well, because it conformed the footage when it added it to the timeline. However, I'll right click, change clip speed, 60 frames per second drops to 40%. And all of a sudden, playing this footage, you can start to see the leaves gently swirling around, taking it easy, having a nice time. Those astute among you will notice as we get into the 120 frames, we have no audio. That's because to shoot 120 frames, my Panasonic GH5 kind of cheats. It uses variable frame rates, meaning it only stores a certain amount of frames. In fact, in this case, it records at 60 frames per second, but it treats it as 120 frames per second footage. Again, I use the right click, change clip speed, back down to 40, and here's what we look like. Extra slow, does a good job with the variable in camera, persistence of the frame rate. And then we'll jump over here to 180. Now, as you do this, of course, your shutter speed, though I've kept it at 180 degrees, gets a little bit smaller, so there's less light coming into the lens. And as a result, it can get darker, so you have to make sure you're planning ahead for that. Here I am on the side of the house where there isn't as much light already. I had to stop it down and uh, adjust the ND filter on the front of the camera. As I had some quality time to think as I was clearing items off my honeydew list, this is what I came up with in my brain. On the left, you have 24 frames playing straight, then as we move towards the right, you can see us going from 30, 60, 120, and 180 retimed to match the 24 frames per second and generate slow-mo. It is quite dramatic when you look at it to see what 180 frames a second looks like slowed down to 24p versus even the 60. But when you compare it back to 24, you see the significant slowdown compared to straight time. Now let's take a look at what it means to slow down footage and resolve with the neural engine. Here we are in 24 frames per second, slowed down to 12. This is without the neural engine. And so you may notice and see it more in the larger motion as I move. It's a bit of a strobing effect where it's just a jitter, jitter, jitter. It's subtle, but it does come in pretty heavily. However, if we were to compare this to what DaVinci Resolve can do with the neural engine, moving our existing footage to the left and using the neural engine on the right, we now have a good idea of what it does. It fills in the gaps to smooth out the jutter. It does this by approximating the frames between the frames, that is, those that don't exist that it invents, using the convolutional network that it's got inside the neural engine. It's important to note if you're in the camera market that the GH5, while one of the fastest on the market, in shooting 4K video at 60 frames per second. Can't do anything else in 4K. In fact, to jump up to 120 or 180 frames per second, 
I had to drop down to 1080p. And that's part of the quality difference that you see here as I put the two side by side. I hope this has been a great opportunity for you to learn how to use the retiming as well as see the quality differences between footage manipulated with the Neural Engine and Resolve. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button down below. It helps others find it. And subscribe to the channel. I've got more content coming. Have a great day.